The first modern discovery of how to start a fire with flint and steel. The first modern discovery of how to start a fire with flint and steel was made by the French scientist, Denis Papon. It is said that some Native Americans in North America used this method to cook their food on the open fire. Flint and steel is also known as tinder, which is an organic material that can be ignited by friction, heat or sparks. Steel is the ideal tool for survival and outdoor activities because it provides a means of starting fire in any weather condition. After sharpening, strike the steel against the flint to create sparks. This spark will then be used to light kindling material which will create a flame. How do you make a flint and steel? To make a flint and steel, first obtain a piece of sharpened steel, such as an army issue knife. Then take another piece of polished stone or metal and create a depression in the middle of the stone or metal. Place the edge of your knife on this depression at a 20 degree angle. Hold the knife in your hand with the edge of the blade facing up and strike it against a rock or other hard surface to create sparks. Finally, place tinder on top of these sparks and light them with a lighter or match. What are some things I can use to start a fire? There are many different ways that people have devised to start a fire. Some are listed below. Steel wool soaked in oil or gasoline. Box of matches and a steel wool pad or piece of coal on top of tinder. Matches and flint striker. A lighter with a dry wooden matchstick inserted in the spark wheel. The matchstick ignites the matches on top of it and thus will light your wood. A bow drill, which is a hand tool used to make fire by rubbing sticks together over a length of string or a piece of flint, in order to create friction. A gunpowder and tinder fire, which is most commonly ignited by lighting strips of paper soaked in gunpowder, or by igniting a cap of gunpowder with a spark wheel. A lighter with a dry wooden matchstick inserted in the spark wheel will light your wood. How new technology changed things forever in the discovery of fire as a weapon of war? New technology has been changing the world for a long time. From the discovery of fire as a weapon of war to the invention of airplanes, technology has been changing things for good and bad. The invention of gunpowder in 10th century China was one of the most significant advancements in human history. It changed warfare forever and is still used today. The use of gunpowder was not limited to China, it spread throughout Europe as well. The use of gunpowder in warfare was a very significant development in human history. It allowed for more powerful weapons to be created and for armies to become stronger than ever before. Which led to many more advancements such as the development of firearms. The use of gunpowder also led to the development of weaponry such as bombs, grenades and mines. The use of gunpowder dates back to the Song Dynasty in China, where it was first invented. The Chinese had been using various preparations of nitrated salts for many years before that date. Although there are references to the use of gunpowder dating back as early as 9th century AD. It is generally believed that the formula for gunpowder was developed in 1044. By the 13th century, a stable gunpowder was known. Gunpowder was originally a mixture of sulfur, potassium nitrate and charcoal. But is now mainly composed of saltpeter mixed with various ingredients such as sulfur, sugar and starch. Due to its pyrotechnic properties it has found many uses in fireworks, military explosives and mining applications. Gunpowder is made of nitrocellulose, a highly flammable organic compound composed primarily of cellulose, mixed with a mixture of nitrates and sulfur. Cemented carbon powder may also be present in low concentrations. Gunpowder can also be classified by whether its main component is saltpeter or charcoal. Gunpowder that contains predominantly saltpeter is called brown gunpowder. Gunpowder that largely consists of carbon is called black gunpowder. The length of time that must be passed before a gunpowder mixture can no longer support combustion is called the burn rate of the powder. A 16th century depiction of men loading cannons with Greek fire and large scale gunpowder explosions producing white clouds and black smoke. The following is a list of components and manufacturing processes in gunpowder 1. Charcoal. Charcoal is a fuel consisting of small pieces of wood or other plant matter, ignited and burned rapidly inside a closed vessel. The reaction produces intense heat, which transforms the plant matter to charcoal briquettes. Charcoal is made by slow pyrolysis, pyro equals fire, lysis equals breaking down, of wood, fat, or other combustible material. 2. Neon, neon, abbreviated Ni2 plus a neon, is a chemical element with symbol Ni and atomic number 10. 
Neon is a noble gas that was discovered in 1898 by the British chemists William Ramsey and Morris W. 3. Sulfur-colored glass is due to the presence of cadmium sulfide, CDS, atoms. Cadmium sulfide is a water-soluble yellowish salt that is a byproduct of the production of sulfuric acid. It can be used to color glass yellow and this has been done since ancient times. It can also be used to make fertilizers, pesticides and soaps. 4. Mercury. Mercury is a chemical element with symbol Hg and atomic number 80. Mercury is the only metal that is a liquid at room temperature. It has long been used in thermometers and barometers, as well as in electrical switches, fluorescent lamps and other devices. The Impact of Man Discovering the Use of Fire in Modernity Fire is one of the most important innovations in the history of humanity. It has allowed humans to advance from being hunter-gatherers to agriculturalists and ultimately civilization. Fire has been used for cooking, heating, protection, and even destruction. It has enabled humans to create a vast array of new tools and technologies based on fire. With these advancements, humans have been able to create a much larger population that could live more comfortably than ever before with the use of fire. Some of the most common types of fire use are cooking, heating, and protection. It is believed that humans first learned to cook with fire about 790,000 years ago in a campfire. The Neanderthals use fire for heat as well as protection from predators. Fire has had a profound effect on humans. It has enabled humans to create tools and technologies that have helped shape the course of history. The impact of the use of fire in modernity is evident in the popular naming of the following period in history the Fire Age. Fire was used for protection from predators as early as 1.8 million years ago. When evidence suggests that Australopithecus afarensis had a flint spearhead that could be used to kill animals and even people. In addition, it is believed that humans began living in caves and rock shelters to avoid the natural predators that inhabited these areas. This has been supported by a number of archaeological finds, such as the Schoningen spears that were discovered in Germany over 30 years ago. The impact of fire on society is immense and it has made human life much more comfortable. For a long time, fire has been the most important invention for humans. It is safe to say that without this discovery, we would not have the modern society we have today. The invention of fire has impacted us in many different ways from providing light and heat, to cooking food and providing warmth. However, fire has also created a lot of problems for humans. The most significant problem is the large amount of pollution it produces. Fire can lead to air pollution and ground-level ozone when it's allowed to be uncontrolled. Fire leads to health problems due to the smoke released from burning wood, paper, or other sources that produce cancer-causing chemicals and hazardous particles. According to the National Fire Protection Association, fire caused an estimated $14 billion in property damage in 2014. There is also the risk of injury or death from a fire that should be taken into consideration as well. This can be especially dangerous for people who live near wooded areas with dry and dense vegetation, like the North American population does. Fires cause property damage in many sectors of the U.S., including commercial buildings, which represent about $70 billion in property damage per year. The transportation sector can also be affected, as fires caused an estimated $26 billion a year due to incidents such as car accidents or faulty welding jobs. The overall cost of fire-related damages is estimated at $40 billion per year in the U.S. With a population of 431,728,000 people, a number that is projected to reach 523 million by 2035, the damages would amount to $622.5 billion per year. The U.S., like other countries, has suspected causes for the fires caused by arson, such as power lines, or the increased use of CRTs. The arson fires, which are suspected to be the result of an intentional act by an individual or group. These fires account for approximately 15% of all accidental residential fire deaths each year in the U.S., which amounts to 2,100 deaths per year. Thank you for watching How Man Discovers the Use of Fire and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please.